so thank you for this opportunity. Um, if I may also recognize my fellow speakers who, as you've gathered, are far more steeped in the gas industry than I am. Um, nevertheless, uh, I do carry with me the benefit of exposure to the policy and regulatory environment. Um, as I walk around, I see a number of my IPP colleague faces here today. If you don't mind, if I can recognize them as well, uh, thank you for your attendance. Please take the opportunity, and I have to, I have to do some advertising. Uh, please take the opportunity to shake hands with the, the colleagues from the IPP office. Uh, we um, are looking forward to very intensive dialogue and uh, stakeholder engagements with everybody in the industry in the months to come um, as we, we plan uh, and implement uh, the IRP. Um, since 2016, and I, I mentioned 2016 because that was the time that we uh, published our project implementation manual for the Gas to Power program. Since 2016, uh, uh, those of you who are South African or have been watching the South African space will know that much has changed. Um, fortunately, much has cha stayed the same as well. Some of the changes include myself, and as you can see, I've, I've, I've turned rather grey over this period, um, but also in terms of the leadership at the IPP office. At a broader and more important level, um, our country has been going through some difficulties, and I emphasise this because it is key to us to understand the environment in which we have to implement a gas to power program or pursue our objectives of building a, a gas economy. Um, not only um, is uh, fiscal space constrained, uh, we all know that uh, the single buyer ESCOM um, is experiencing uh, serious um, debt concerns and, and uh, energy availability um, uh, constraints. Um, but at the same time, wheels keep on moving. Uh, the country remains, in, in our view, an attractive um, investment destination. And as we prepare for the implementation of the IRP, what has not changed, in our view, uh, is the compelling case for introducing and uh, continuing the introduction of gas into the energy mix. So, uh, and, and uh, Tabang, if I may say, some of the topics um, I will um, cover briefly and others I would spend a little bit more time on. Uh, based on my assumption, I, I trust it's the right assumption, in terms of where the audience would particularly be interested to understand what the current thinking is. So, uh, with regard to the policy and regulatory and planning framework, uh, uh, as well as the procurement framework flowing from that, um, I believe most of you have seen this slide from the IPP office before. Um, I'd just like to spend a little bit of time on this because I go back to my introductory comment, what has changed since 2016 and what hasn't changed. What hasn't changed is that the National <coughs> Development Plan objective to build a game-changing gas economy is still current, um, it is still government policy, and the, the, um, the injection of energy to achieving that uh, and the desire to achieve that remains. What should be acknowledged is the fact that um, when the NDP was pub published, it was 2012, we're in 2019, uh, and we've lost time. Um, flowing from the NDP, as you're all aware, uh, the energy sector is directed not only in terms of the, the white paper on um, 
energy dating from 1998, but very much from an implementation perspective through two plans, the Integrated Energy Plan and the Integrated Resource Plan. Um, I believe that it's been well published that it is anticipated that the IRP, the draft IRP, will be serving with Cabinet. Um, and we, I believe we're all keenly anticipating the promulgation of the IRP after a policy adjustment. Um, you will all appreciate that I'm not a member of Cabinet, so please do not ask me questions about what I expect to be decided. Um, but what is important um, is, again, to recognize that the previous IRP dated 2010. Again, it's nine years later. Uh, in the intervening period, many a thing have changed. Um, nevertheless, the IRP is the key to unlocking uh, the process of issuing determinations. It provides a view towards uh, what the contribution of different fuel sources and technologies are or uh, are expected in the uh, in the energy mix as well as grid connection dates expected grid connection dates it is on the item of determinations that I would like to just stand still for a minute um, so most of you I believe will be aware of the fact that um, in 2015, there was a, an amendment to a 2012 determination, um, a determination addressing base load and risk mitigation, um, which introduced some changes to the anticipation on how gas will be rolled out um, as a uh, um, as a contributor to the energy mix and particularly in the generation of, of electricity. What is important about the 2015 uh, determination is the following. First of all, uh, whereas the 2010 IRP anticipated uh, a, that the, the, the gas contribution will be met primarily by LNG, the 2015 amendment um, uh, recognized a broader spectrum of, of, of gas, including, of course, um, LNG. Um, it provided for a, a megawatt allocation of 3,126 megawatt to be rolled out in one or more projects. Uh, that contribution to the energy mix coming from um, the IPP or independent power producer sector. Um, importantly, that it was technology agnostic, in other words, uh, welcoming technologies as long as they are, are um, viable. What this determination also emphasized is an approach to gas to power that would enable third uh, additional third party offtake for um, uh, alternative uh, application or use other than just pure electricity. Very important dimension to keep in mind um, in terms of going forward. Um, at this point in time, um, the indications from the IRP, the, the draft IRP is that uh, in relation to the forward-looking up to 2030 um, megawatt contributions, new determinations are expected. Uh, what we do know is that the uh, draft IRP anticipates 1,000 megawatts uh, to be co grid-connected 2024 and another 2,000 uh, in 2027. Um, thus, more or less the same total amount of, of megawatts than uh, anticipated in 2015. Um, definitely anticipating more than one project. Um, and, of course, w as we know, the load factor factors are lower. I'll, I'll, I'll address that a little bit further in my presentation. Um, but that gas is part of the energy mix is, is abundantly clear. 
What has happened in the meantime certainly requires us to answer the question, and I believe it covers the theme of this seminar, is how do we achieve this in view of the shifts that have occurred in the interim. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the IPP office, um, I think those are few and far between, but um, just to emphasize that the IPP office was established to implement uh, the independent power producers program um, across various uh, energy um, sources and technologies starting off with the, the renewables program, but also having been assigned the gas program, and as you're aware, we've, we also launched a coal IPP program. From a general planning perspective, uh, I believe uh, most of the audience is familiar with um, how the, the planning process um, around the Integrated Energy Plan and the IRP is conducted, what I would like to emphasize um, is actually, in terms of current reality, is what does the energy supply look like today? Now, much has been reported um, also by EE publishers, um, academics, other sector stakeholders, with regard to uh, the current and, uh, and anticipated supply shortages. Uh, the reason why I'm emphasizing that uh, is because I believe gas plays a very unique role um, as a, uh, a flexible uh, uh, generation, generation option um, and as a, a transition fuel. So, um, I think it's critically important to understand and recognize the role of gas uh, within the context of anticipated uh, potential uh, supply shortages. Um, in, uh, as you may be aware, uh, last year ESCOM published its medium-term systems outlook um, and indicated that uh, an availability factor of below 71% would not be sufficient. Now, uh, in May this year, EE publishers reported that year-to-date the EAF was at 65%. Uh, um, from this, I believe it's absolutely clear that despite all of the other bureaucratic um, delays, uh, the reality on the ground is that time is of the essence. Um, by the way, reminding myself, the 2015 um, determination uh, was promulgated also with reference to an anticipation of risk mitigation, uh, with an anticipation of grid connection as soon as possible. I don't think that context has changed. What we must recognize um, with regard to the policy and regulatory framework is that, and I don't think South Africa is unique, I don't think the sector is unique, that all ducks are not necessarily in a row at the same time. So there are missing gaps uh, at this point in time. The gas strategy, um, and you may be aware that there was a, a, an initiative to develop a gas utilization master plan, hasn't been published. Um, so uh, the IEP, IEP uh, in terms of its promulgation is delayed. Um, so the full regulatory or, or uh, planning and policy and planning environment is not necessarily fully in place uh, at this point in time. That having been said does not hold us back from procurement, um, if I can just emphasize. Ideally, all of those building blocks should, however, be in place to ensure that we move forward in a coordinated and cohesive fashion. Um, and this is a matter that I will raise uh, later on in terms of, of the how. 
Um, I've mentioned um, the, the situation around ESCOM. Uh, most of you will be aware that the market structure uh, and the future of the single buyer is also in transition. Um, I, I want to emphasize again uh, that does not hold us back from procurement. However, it does make the environment and the playing field an interesting one that will require us all to put, up, put on our thinking caps uh, to work together as a collective in a non-competitive, and I'm not talking about competition through procurement, but a non-competitive, non-contesting fashion uh, to make this happen, um, to make the, the gas to power program and the, the building of a gas economy a reality. Um, I've actually already touched on this slide, um, but, and I believe uh, my colleague Jaku will also touch on the, um, the benefits, or the industrialization benefits, which is a, a further imperative to uh, implementing the gas to power program as well as developing a, a broader gas economy. Um, unfortunately, one of our biggest assets is also one of our biggest constraints. Having a, a, multi, a, a number of <coughs> government departments, uh, public entities, um, having an interest in the gas sector is a benefit. But if not well managed, and when working in silos, can hold us back. And I believe that one of the key aspects to be resolved in taking the gas to power program forward. Um, as you will know, um, si significant infrastructure in terms of distribution um, and also linking the gas to power program with the importation of the, the, uh, the necessary molecules is required. We have to work in a synchronized and co coordinated fashion to ensure that the gas to power program comes to life and that uh, additional third party pent up demand is met. I have already touched on the IRP. Um, I would like to, and uh, this is also a, a very important factor in terms of what has changed since 2016. Those of you who are familiar with the 2016 PIM would know that there was an anticipation of a gas to power program vertically integrated um, and um, generating um, at a base load, load factor. Uh, what we have in the draft IRP is a shift away from that. Um, the lo anticipated load factor will be lower, um, ranging between mostly 12% and occasionally up to 50%. It does change the economics of, of the project. Um, I've emphasized the, the um, need um, the inextricable need, uh, need for related infrastructure. Um, and uh, it, it, it has to be a, a, um, a joint initiative by both the public uh, and the private sector. Uh, at the same time, and again, I want to refer to your next seminar where uh, seemingly, um, excuse me, s battery storage uh, towards grid stability uh, 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 will be will be discussed as a flexible technology. Um, what needs to be recognized is that the IRP anticipates a rollout of uh, such uh, storage technologies and that it may be interpreted as introducing some form of competition between storage and gas uh, with regard to certain attributes in stabilizing intermittent power from renewables. Um, our belief is, however, and, and it's, it's a no-brainer um, really, that gas will continue to play a role 
um, especially in terms of long duration capacity requirements um, and until such time as new technologies mature to the point that they actually can effectively um, on, on a reliable basis replace um, older technologies. The, the development of a, um, a gas economy, uh, the implementation or procurement of a gas to, program, uh, but to power program, is, is essentially part of a longer term country objective. Um, it's not just about electricity. Um, in, the 20, uh, in the 2016 PIM, it was anticipated that the gas to power program would be a principal anchor to the development of a gas economy. Uh, as I proceed with the presentation, I believe uh, some shift in that has occurred. Um, the benefits to a gas to power program and developing a gas economy um, is, is not only direct, they are very distinct indirect uh, benefits that will flow from a job creation point of view and of course while still a fossil fuel um, will certainly contribute in controlling uh, the, the carbon emission uh, footprint uh, of the country. So um, urgency on the one hand but understanding this, that this is a longer term uh, possibly over 25 year objective for the country to pursue. Uh, on this point and also with reference to the emerging value of, of ESS, um, of course foremost on our minds would be um, whether the decisions that we take today in terms of infrastructure investments, uh, the deployment of gas only for electricity uh, will ensure that we can stand back uh, without uh, stand back and conclude that the decisions we take today we will not regret in the future. So as far as the gas market is concerned, um, I believe my colleague Andy will will expand uh, much more on this. Um, I've raised the fact that um, South Africa is not only look, looking at uh, natural gas, uh, LNG, uh, but also other forms of, of gas, um, that um, we are looking at the deployment of this, the, the related technologies uh, from a system flexibility perspective, um, and that, <coughs> excuse me, the demand the potential for demand for gas goes way beyond just electricity. Um, our s uh, the previous studies undertaken by the IPP office uh, indicate that the demand can be uh, as big as 870 petajoules, um, and that would include a, a gas to power plant, uh, the industrial uh, demand, and uh, demand from other downstream uh, um, industries. What is important is that we, and, and it's rumored that um, there's, there's a lot of pent up demand um, from industrial and other users. Um, the question is, are our estimates correct? And this is where we need the private sector to step forward and assist us in um, uh, refining the estimates in terms of, of what the non-electricity demand would be. Um, the, the matter of gas prices, I only have five minutes left and I still have a lot to say. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on um, electricity prices. I, I believe the audience is well aware of the fact that electricity prices to the extent that <coughs> we're talking about um, 
gas prices to the extent that the molecules are, are expected at least for the short to medium term to be imported um, will be uh, susceptible to um, forex changes uh, and, and volatility and this is a matter that we will have to resolve. <coughs> As far as the status of the program is concerned, touched on some of these matters, um, highlighted what uh, remains the same and what has changed. Um, what is important is that um, at the time in 2016, we anticipated a bundled approach. I'm not suggesting today uh, whether it will be unbundled, but what I am saying to you is um, the approach in 2016 needs to be revisited, particularly to the extent that um, the, the, um, the current pricing uh, of, of electricity tariffs um, already you know, um, introduces challenges. Um, the, the, uh, the susceptibility to forex volatility, etc., does require, requires us to review um, our approach of anchoring a gas co a economy principally on a gas to power program. Thus, a greater emphasis in understanding the demand for alternative use and understanding how we will be in engaging with the market and encouraging alternative use to to develop a, a gas economy. Particular considerations relate to the location of the first gas to power plant. Uh, the Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy is already on record as stating uh, that uh, Kucha is earmarked. Uh, Transnet has uh, published indications that it's looking at developing infrastructure, <laughs> excuse me, in Richards Bay, we need to get an alignment uh, on this. Um, we, the, the, uh, I've touched on the IPP uh, gas uh, capacity requirements that would not be sufficient to actually drive um, third-party offtake uh, as such. So there's been a shift, uh, a, a, uh, a higher degree of, of emphasis on third-party offtake. Um, we have the benefit of a, a regional gas in the form of, of gas discoveries in Mozambique. Key question is whether we will be able to mitigate some of the risks in terms of um, the commencement of a gas to power program through imports from Mozambique and will that be available in 2024. On the positive side, you probably aware of the discovery in the Otanikwa Basin uh, through Total's initiative, uh, uh, the Bropara uh, gas initiative. The question is, will we, when will that gas become available to switch from imports to local gas? In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, um, the, there is a huge opportunity that would require a collaborative approach and time is of the essence. We have to get our ducks in a row. Thank you very much.